Now let's open the Krakatoa interface and see how you can cast particles. So first what we have to do is set the renderer to save particles to file sequence. As you do it, you see this red rectangle appears. This is just to make us aware that we are going to save particles to disk and not rendering them. Once we change this to render the scene particles, this will go away. Make sure pflow geometry is turned on. As in this case we are only going to use pflow particle system here. But if you have other particle systems in the scene such as thinking particle or other PRT loaders or legacy particles such as spray or super spray, you can turn on or off the corresponding boxes to include or exclude the particles as you need. However, we can leave the other boxes turned on here and it will only cast the particles which exist in the scene and it's a pflow in this case. Now either from the render rollout or right clicking here you can set the range for which you want to cast the particles. Now in the save particles rollout set the folder where you want to save the particles and by default the word particles will be added as a prefix to the file names. You can either change this to anything specific that you want or just click on this M button to set your scene name as a prefix. Now from the save channels box we will only keep the two most important channels that we need in this particular situation which are the position and velocity channel. So we will move the rest to the left side by selecting them and clicking this arrow here. The more channel you save, the more time it takes to cast and also consumes more disk space. These other channels are required in different situations for different purpose. But for this particular animation, these two channels will suffice. If you are familiar with particle systems, you may know the seed parameters generates a random number and changes the particle system slightly. Although it will appear identical to the previous one, a different seed value will give the system a unique look. Krakatoa takes advantage of this feature and provides a very useful feature known as partitioning. To get high particle count without increasing the birth rate too much, which will slow down the system, Krakatoa generates partitions. This gives us a large number of particles depending on the number of partitions we create. Each partition is the same particle system with different seed value in the operators which gives each partition a unique look. So if we set our birth rate to 1 million and create 10 partitions, we will get 10 million particles. I will create 5 partitions here with birth rate set to 1 million. Make sure the random seed generation of corresponding operators are turned on here. If you are not sure which random seed to include, I suggest you keep all of these turned on. You can use the Deadline Render Manager if you are using a network of computers. This will take advantage of distributing the task over a network of nodes and make the casting work faster. With the free version of Deadline you can use up to two nodes. But since I don't have Deadline on this system, I will just generate all these particles locally. If for some reason you need to stop the casting or the system crashes, you don't have to recast all the particles which are already cast. Just click on the skip existing file and it will start casting from where it left off. Now I will pause the video and we'll be back when the casting is done. Alright, now that the particles are done casting, we will set the renderer to render the scene particles. Turn off the particle system as we don't need it anymore. Select all the objects in the scene and put them in a new layer. You can delete them if you want. I'll just hide them here and in another layer I'll create a PRT loader. To do this, we go to Krakatoa and drag a PRT loader. As we let go the mouse button, the directory where we last saved the particle sequence will open up. Select any one of the file and click load. It will ask if we want to load the selected sequence and any other partition that exists in the directory 
So hit yes and it will ask which of the partitions we want to include. With all the partitions selected, hit Art Partitions and let all the particles load in the scene. This large number of particles may slow down the viewport, so in the Particle File Loader rollout, select Few Partitions and turn off the visibility for the viewport. This will not affect the render however, just the particles won't be visible or displayed in the viewport. If you notice, I have the partition 1 loaded here twice. That's because for some reason my system hang if I load all the partitions at once, so I had to load one partition at a time and accidentally I load the part 1 twice. So you don't have to worry about that. Now from the rendering rollout, from this drop down, choose to load every nth particle so that we can view the animation properly. We can also reduce the percentage of particles in the viewport by reducing this value here but we will leave this at the default value of 0.1 here. Now that we are done with the animation part, let's see how to render these particles using the Krakatoa renderer. The two most important parameters to consider while rendering in Krakatoa are these two under the main control rollout, the final pass density and the lighting density. The final pass density determines the overall density of the particles. The higher this value, the more solid the particles appear. They will appear as solid grains with high density settings as you see here. And if we decrease this value, the particles will appear more transparent. The two spinners, that is the final pass density and the density exponent, work together to adjust the overall density of the particles. The exponent changes the density in powers of 10 and the final pass density fine tunes it. For example, if we put 1 in the final pass density and minus 2 in the exponent, then the overall density becomes 1 times 10 to the power minus 2, that is 1 hundredth of its original density. The maximum density value for a particle is 1 and by default that is set as the original density or the per particle density for each particle. So if we put a higher value above 1, it won't make any difference. However, if we had used magma flow to decrease the per particle density below 1, then only putting values above 1 would make sense here. And we can dial in values above 1 until the per particle density reaches its maximum limit, which is 1. Since we are not dealing with changing the per particle density using magma flow here, we will only concentrate on decreasing the particle density below 1 to give them a wispy look rather than solid and grainy one. But as we keep decreasing this overall density, the particle cloud appears very flat and there is no internal illumination. This is where the lighting density comes in use. This parameter determines how much of the scene lights enter the particle cloud and illuminates it internally. If we decrease this density, more light will enter the particle cloud and it will appear brighter and vice versa. The two spinners here work together in the same way as in final pass density. The exponent changes the current value in powers of 10 and the lighting density is used for fine tuning. I have made this reference clip so you can have a better idea of how this final pass density and lighting density work together to give different look to the particles. So now that we know how these two work, we will tweak them until we get the look we are after. And for this animation, I settle for 8 in the final pass density and minus 4 in its exponent and 3 and minus 3 in the lighting pass density and its exponent respectively. 
Now let's give these particles some interesting color. If we go to the global render values rollout, we can set a color for the particles here. However, we will use magma flow to color our particles. So we will leave this off and let's talk about the magma flow editor. 